subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Today's video again is on wildfires and focusing again on California, which is seeing some terrifying real world effects of global climate change. At the moment, the state, which is no stranger to regular wildfires, is seeing two of its biggest ever forest fires since 1932. There is weather warning out as well for the unusual phenomenon of dry lightning. Additionally, there are two hurricanes approaching the country from the other side simultaneously as pictures of more than five simultaneous water spouts or tornadoes over sea are also going viral. In this video, we're going to talk about an assorted combination of forest fires, dry lightning, heat waves, tornadoes, hurricanes, sequoia forests and the endangered condor birds. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Dry lightning is caused as a part of a dry thunderstorm. Dry thunderstorms are those where lightning and thunder are produced just like regular thunderstorms but most of the rainfall or precipitation evaporates before reaching the ground as rainfall. In meteorology, this is called a verga and occurs when air pressure increases closer to the ground. It's very common in deserts and is quite common in regions like California, the Middle East, northern parts of Africa, as well as even Australia. In California right now, this is being caused because of two different kinds of weather systems. Two colliding weather systems, one is the tropical moisture from the south, as well as another one which is a high pressure ridge from the east, are now producing these dry thunderstorms. All the water and moisture in this kind of system is higher up in the atmosphere and doesn't really reach the ground and the intense heat wave that this part of the world is already reeling under has tremendously worsened existing conditions. Such conditions, those which are present today in this region of California, are favorable to dry lightning which can set fires and also to dust storms because strong winds move out from the storm and dry soil is picked up from the ground. Very strong dust storms and sandstorms formed in these kind of conditions are called haboobs from the Arabic word haboob. Dry lightning is not a new phenomenon by any means and it's definitely not a stranger to this part of the country. In 1987, dry lightning strikes in the month of August set fire to forest consistently in what was described back then as fires of hell. Over 775,000 acres of wooded areas burned in multiple states in the country, producing large mushroom clouds of smoke. Then later in 1999, there were hundreds of lightning-induced fires again. Once again in 2008, within a span of just two days, less than two days, more than 5,000 lightning strikes started over 1,000 fires. So it's not an unfamiliar phenomenon. In fact, most record-breaking fires in California were all started by lightning strikes in the northern or central coast of the state, although a large number of fires are started by human activity in the southern parts of the state. Currently, the wildfires in California are so many in number that many are combining to come together to form one mega fire that burns out of control. The Lake Napa Unit Lightning Complex fire in the Napa Sonoma County region has burnt over 345,000 acres of forest, making it the second largest fire in the state's modern history. The Santa Clara Unit Complex fire in the East Bay region is the third largest fire in history, having already burnt over 340,000 acres. The largest fire in the state was 2018's Mendocino Complex fire, which burned a total of about 460,000 acres of land. But at the moment, two of the top three biggest fires in the state are burning simultaneously. The reasons that make these fires so hard to contain are manifold. Primarily are the sheer volume and frequency of dry lightning strikes. It is believed that there have been some 12,000 strikes over the past few days that have ignited over 585 fires so far, spread across geographically, making it hard for firefighters to contain these fires and prevent them from merging into giant infernos. And to no one's surprise, lack of solid firefighting infrastructure and reliance on prison labor, which is now unavailable, is making it harder to contain the fires. In seven days, 
The California fires have burned over 1 million acres of land, larger than even some states in the US. And now, there is forecast of more thunderstorms, wind gusts and even more dry lightning. What could worsen the ongoing fires are storms. If storms with strong winds and lots of lightning and thunder but almost no rainfall occur, the fires could get much, much worse. And currently, these fires are already threatening redwoods and condors. Redwoods are the giants of trees. These trees, more familiarly known to us as sequoia trees, are the largest and tallest trees in the world. Some of them in California are extremely old and many of these old ends are more than 1000 years old with their own unique individual names. Many have stayed safe from the fire, but the Big Basin State Park, which is the oldest state park in California, has seen a lot of damage with many visuals from inside of the state park showing fires raging inside the barks of these huge giant sequoia trees. But still, redwoods are hardy. They have an extremely thick bark, up to a foot thick in fact, and this thickness helps them withstand very strong fires. Even when these trees are fully burned, they can sprout new growth. Condors, on the other hand, are a different story. These birds belong to the vulture family and they have been categorized as endangered and critically endangered for a few decades now. In 1987, condors went completely extinct in the wild. Researchers have been working very hard to increase the population of these birds. In 87, when the siege and the fire happened, there were only 27 birds left in the world. And even today, there are just about 100 birds. These birds have a wingspan of 9 to 10 feet and are the largest land birds in the Western Hemisphere. Each individual is very closely monitored and all nests are observable, especially through wild camps. Of eight condor nests with chicks this year, five are inside of the fire zone. And with such few numbers for a species, even the loss of four or five individuals will be very devastating. Condors and sequoia trees do have a relationship. In the past, during very extreme wildfires, condors have been known to nest inside of these redwood trees and survive these fires. So biologists are hopeful that they may do so even now, even though many baby birds that are still in their nests in the fire zone are unable to fly. And then, of course, there are troubles with the rest of the wildlife in this area, all different kinds of flora and fauna, ruined infrastructure and the really bad air quality that affects everyone and everything. The fires these year are extremely intense and they will only continue to get more intense with each passing year. Satellite images of the 2020 fires are terrifying, but these are now accompanied by another double threat on the other side of the coast for this country. Approaching from the east are not one but two tropical cyclones. Tropical storms Laura and Marco are already wreaking havoc. Laura has killed 11 in Dominican Republic and Haiti already, and Marco was upgraded to a hurricane but is expected to weaken. Both are also expected to bring strong storm surges in the area, threatening mainland US and all the island regions nearby. There have been two simultaneous tropical storms or depressions in the Gulf of Mexico before, but never two hurricanes and Laura is not yet a hurricane. This area is also common for water spouts and tornadoes in the ocean, but going viral again last week was an image that contained not two or three or even four water spouts, but simultaneously six spouts. 2020 is indeed proving to be the year that truly is giving us a real preview of what the world is going to be like in the new future.